Um, joining us now is Dr. Frank Bano, who is the head of research at Dankwa Institute and also a member of the Economics Committee of the 2024 NPP Manifesto for Dr. Mahmoud Obamia. Dr. Frank Bano, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, all. Thank you very much. Pardon me for my late miss. I've got No, that, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is your first time, so we we'll welcome you on Key Point. <laughs> Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. The first time we met was when we were with ISODEC many, many, many years ago. Oh, we've met before. Indeed. <laughs> so, if, if, it's if, a small world, you, indeed. <laughs> you, you so journey to go and see greener pastures out there. And, uh, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too. Greener <laughs> I don't know much about the greener pasture last year. Anyway. More, more or less, I went back to school. Yes, indeed. That's and better. that's why you, are, you have pasture. a doctorate now. Welcome. Also, um, Isaac Adongo is uh, as indicated. He is here with us. Zargo, good morning. Welcome once again. Good morning. Also, uh, Professor Kobi Mensa is a political marketing strategist. And, Lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Kobe Mensah, it's good to have you. Good morning. Thank you. Good it's morning. Good to be with us for this, the brief part of the morning. Professor Ransford Jampo, is a professor of political science at the University of Ghana. Prof, it's good to have you again. Good morning to you. Good morning, morning. Welcome. He's also the president of the University of Ghana chapter of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC. Yeah, that's my boss. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> don't, okay. don't, put, don't put me and Kobe together. <laughs> that, that's why right. we think alike. <laughs> don't take leave of him shortly. But, but it, it's, it's good to yeah. then bring in um, uh, Dr. Bano because the, I'm sure there was a, an objective. There was a reason why you even had the, the flag bearer of the party meet the media on Sunday. Mm. Was that objective achieved? after your assessment of the engagement, that four-hour engagement on Sunday? Thank you very much, and a, a very good morning to your listeners. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, we, know, we know the key role that the media plays. We know that, I mean, in, in real terms, the media is the fourth arm of government. I mean, we, we have the legislature, we have the executive, we have the judiciary, and in fact, the media is a very important arm of, of governance for every country, not just Ghana. And for that matter, any time uh, a candidate who is aspiring to lead a country like Ghana uh, launches his manifesto, his vision that he seeks to espouse, he seeks to achieve once, giving the nod, it will be very, very important, or it is critical for that matter, to brief uh, the media, which is very important. I mean, whatever conversation that takes place, whatever that needs to get down there, it is the media that needs to more or less trumpet this uh, 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 message. And for that matter, it is important that the media has absolute clarity in their minds in terms of the messaging that is being put out there. So regarding uh, this particular pillar, then uh, it became very important that the flag bearer meet with the media for the media to further interrogate his vision and his policies to the Ghanaian populace and also to be abreast with the key policies and the factors that they think could be set these policies so that the flag bearer makes them very <coughs> clear, provides clarity, provides uh, the objectives of which certain uh, 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 important uh, uh, policies has been rolled out. And just when I was entering, <coughs> I heard you uh, talked about the fact that um, uh, a question was posed to the flag bearer uh, uh, Dr. Alhaji Mahmoud Bamiya mm -hmm. as to why uh, he, as vice president, uh, hasn't implemented some of the fiscal uh, uh, policies that uh, he sought to, he sought to uh, pursue once given the note come December 7th and so on in subsequently mm -hmm. on uh, January 7, 2024. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, the, I mean... Th that answer that he gave, yeah. you, you agree it was the right thing to say? No, I, I, th I think, it, I, I mean, you were there, right? You, no, you I wasn't. There. Okay, okay. I, I wasn't now, there. Now, if, if you listen to the answer that he gave, I think, I think beyond that, I think, I think he went out to provide the reasons. Why? What answer did he give? The right. reasons that he, he, he said. And I think, just like Prof was saying, I think that answer was just something to spice the whole conversation. I don't think the actual answer was anchored in that particular statement because he went on further to explain that, look, let's take an example of just recently the occurrences in the United States of America. I mean, Kamala never knew that she would be 
the DNC candidate for the 2024 elections mm -hmm. in November. Kamala mm -hmm. never knew this. I mean, we all knew that President Joe Biden was the one who was going to lead the DNC come November. Uh, I mean, he was actually uh, the leader already, and we knew that he was going to be on the ballot in 2024. But fast forward, things changed, and mm -hmm. then Kamala comes in. Now, Kamala, I think about a month ago, or less than a month ago, actually outlined her economic policies. And, 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 and I don't know, Brad, if you've had the opportunity to interrogate her economic policies and just suppose it to that of uh, Joe Biden and what Joe Biden sought to do, I mean, you could see that there's, there's a stark contrast. But this is someone who has been with Joe Biden through and through since uh, 2020 when he brought her on board. But you could see that she has her own vision. And, and just like you sit here and just like any of us seated here this morning, I can tell you for a fact, I can tell you for a fact, let me take Honorable Adongo to be for, for, for his party. If Honorable Adongo today is given the nod to be flag bearer of the NDC, it will shock you that there are so many things that Honorable Adongo would seek to do differently from the Just Lunch Manifesto. And, 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 it, and it's normal with every uh, human institution. Mm. So, and we also know that any time a budget is presented, the budget that was pre presented to parliament is presented in the name of a certain president. The certain president has his own uh, objectives. The certain president has things that he wants to do. And based on that, a budget is drafted. And once a budget is sent to parliament, and we have a parliamentarian, here, parliament deliberates on it and approves that budget for that fiscal year. So in that matter, the 2024 fiscal year, it is very difficult for you to say the vice president should change. Because, you know, if the vice president today wants to change the fiscal regime in terms of the tax aspect that you were talking about, mm. it's something that needs to go through parliament. It needs to go through the budget statement. And, and, and indeed, that, that's, that's that part of the conversation that many have. So, so you, you want us to not place too much premium on the first part that he says, you know what, if I do all of the things I'm saying right now, what will I do? if I become president, or what, what message will I take into the manifesto? Yes. You want us to you, you take it as a joke? No, no, I'm not saying it's a joke. I mean, I mean, I mean that was just to spice the conversation. That's what I, well, oh, that's what right. I mean. But, but see, the point I'm making is, if you listen to him, he went on to explain, mm -hmm. and I mean, he went on to explain the things that I'm saying. But, but from what you said, I mean, before even this today, mm -hmm. there's been that proposal that, look, if he sees good reason in abolishing E-Levy and also the, the tax on bet winnings, Hmm. If that is done, it would enhance his fortunes going into the election. That is, if that is done before the elections. So, unless, of course, the suggestion is that <coughs> he's, he's proposed it to President Kufuado, and President Kufuado doesn't think that is the wise thing to do. Okay, so, so, so that's why I, right, that's why I spoke about the tax, uh, the, the, the fiscal regimes. I mean, we, if you take, for example, let me take the 2024 budget statement. The 2024 budget statement has a part that deals with expenditure. It has a part that deals with expected revenue. I mean, the media rev uh, budget review actually revised the expenditure, I think, from 224.6 billion Ghana cities to, I think, about 220 billion Ghana cities. Now, in terms of revenue, uh, per the media budget, expected revenue is supposed to be around 178.2 billion Ghana cities thereabout. Now, this expected revenue is based on the existing tax regime, mm -hmm. if you know that for a fact. Right. Now, what does Dr. Baumia seek to do? What Baumia seeks to do is that, look, I want to change the fiscal regime. And, and, mm. and, and, and right, if you're a history of economics and if you've looked at our economic architecture and the tax uh, regime in Ghana, one thing that is clear is that since independence, the tax regime that we inherited from our four, I mean, our, our, our colonial masters is the same tax architecture that we have practiced today. Mm -hmm. Not much has been made in terms of the fiscal regime, in terms of the tax structure. We've, 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 we've been in that progressive tax regime of which hasn't bring in much. I mean, if you take our tax to GDP ratio since, mm -hmm. nine, in fact, let me, let, let me say on your show that. Ghana recorded its first fiscal deficit in 1959, just two years after independence. And this is a, this is, this is a public record that you can verify. You see, so that, that tells you that in terms of revenue, we, have been, we haven't gotten it right. And any time your <coughs> revenue is low, the tendency for you to have a fiscal deficit because, I mean, demand for public goods and services is that high. I mean, every day, every year, you have graduates coming out and most of which, these... Which is a fair point. What yeah. I was asking for is... 
these policies, in fact, he's, he's been commended for that, that abolishing e-levy and, and all of that. Yes. It's good because we've seen the regressive nature of that tax policy. Yes. So, How about do it now? Yeah, so that's the point I, I was making. That's the point I'm building. And, right? and, and how's yeah, the so, so I, was, I was coming to that point that you were asking me, why not now? And I'm making the point that the 2024 budget is hinged on the current fiscal regime. That's right. what I'm saying. Okay. Now, how does Dr. Palmiya seek to change this fiscal regime? You see, if you are going to abolish something, it means that you should be able to put in measures to make sure there are no shortfalls. And I quite remember that during the media engagement, uh, one journalist asked that if you seek to do A, B, C, D in terms of uh, uh, reducing certain taxes or abolishing taxes, certain taxes, how do we make sure that we are going to fill in these gaps that may occur because we will no longer be getting that revenue. So that's why I, I am coming to the fiscal regime that what Dr. Bamiya seeks to do, one of the reasons why he says he will abolish this is that he is, his government, if given the Nord by Kanye, he is going to implement a new tax regime. And this new tax regime is, will be designed in such a way that it wouldn't be just as we have it now, because currently the tax regime is borne by a few. So anytime sure. you increase even a 1% or a 0.1% increase in the tax regime, it is only a few who have been identified in the tax bracket who bore the cost of this tax regime. Yeah, that, so Dr. seeks to expand this tax regime. And by expanding this tax regime, and he rightly stated, said it on, uh, I think, last two weeks in, in Takrade during uh, his speech. Now he said that. Current estimates by GRA shows that even if we can expand our existing tax regime by 13% of GDP, yeah. by broadening that base, that alone can bring in about 150 billion Ghana cities. And this is an estimate that is done by the Ghana Revenue Service. So fact, based on the new tax regime that okay. he is going to roll out, then it gives him that fiscal space for him to be able to take certain taxes, which has become a burden and quote unquote a nuisance on the Ghanaian population. So, so that's what he seeks to do. So essentially he, he cannot or he hasn't proposed the abolishing of the e-levy and tax on bet winnings to the president now? He hasn't done that? I, I, I don't have that formation as I said here. So I, I cannot confirm or deny that. But, but do you think that, that if that's done before the elections, it would enhance his, his chances? So, so that is what I'm making the point, mm -hmm. that the budget has already been passed. And for that matter, no, given the no, existing... So, so that's why I was talking about revenue and expenditure. Now, given the existing revenue and expenditure that we have already, if such taxes are to be removed today, how do we make up for the difference that comes in? So that's the point that I'm making. That's, that's why I'm right. saying that what Dr. Bamiya seeks to do different is that he seeks to implement a new tax regime, okay. which will broaden the tax base. So if these taxes are taken off, in fact, like I said, for example, uh, let's take... Uh, uh, the, the, the e-levy, for example. We know that the e-levy is approximately giving us, I think, about 1 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. So if, if you just are taking... Just figure. Yeah, just around, I think, about 900 and something, mm -hmm. approximately about 1 billion Ghana cities. So if you are taking 1 billion Ghana cities off the table today, how do you make up for that difference? Okay. Have you thought about that? No, I'm asking you that question. So that's why I'm making that point, because we are saying that why shouldn't we be taken out now? And I'm saying that because of the existing tax regime, it will be very difficult to make up for that difference. But what Dr. Bamiya says, and I'm giving the justification why Dr. Bamiya says he can do it. And okay. he can do it simply because he seeks to implement a new tax regime, which will be able to generate more than what we even get from e-levy by bringing about more than 13% of the population that are not currently on, 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 the, on, the, on the tax bracket. So okay. in that vein, you'll be able to uh, take away a lot of the taxes that you yourself have enumerated here without having any shortfalls. Well, well and I, I make reference to what has been enumerated in the manifesto that you launched two weeks mm. ago. And I, I asked this question premised on the fact that this conversation about the e-levy being off our books has been going on for almost a year and a half now. So it, it is not even before this budget was read. It was actually a consideration, a proposal to the finance minister to have that captured in the 2024 budget that was read sometime in November last year. Mm. So he being a chair of the economic management team and at the time was also flag bearer of the NDC and NPP. There was that consideration that yes, to the extent that he had been quiet on e-levy all the while. And the first time he speaks about it, he says he's going to abolish it. Then there was that indication that he knew that there was something wrong with that tax handle. And so if that was ever proposed to the president and he did not see reason in that, then that also presents another challenge altogether. 